Hi, my name is Lady Enlin, and I'm here to teach you the basics about doing embroidery. Um, embroidery is uh, something that was very popular during the Middle Ages. Um, and I'm gonna show you some examples of it. I'm gonna show you how to get set up to do embroidery, how to do um, some very basic stitches, but things that you can easily um, get creative with, with just some basic stuff. So um, first of all, um, what is embroidery? So um, it's similar to sewing in that you have um, a needle and some kind of thread or fabric that you're working with. But um, whereas sewing is uh, a process where you're fastening pieces of fabric together to make a garment, embroidery is something that you use to uh, kind of decorate and make something um, more fancy and give it some more visual appeal. Um, and in sewing, they might do something um, with like making puffy sleeves or um, slashing the fabric or um, adding pleats or ruffles to it to make it fancy. This is um, a way to do that with just um, some decorative thread. So um, in addition to using some kind of a, a linen or a wool or a silk thread, they could also incorporate um, precious jewels or pearls into it too to make things really super fancy. But that was just for the, the royalty and, the, and the, um, the, um, the, the people who were uh, more affluent. Um, so what you're gonna need is an embroidery hoop. And this is an eight inch size. This is my favorite size to work with, um, especially if I'm working on a larger project, but you can also get them in all kinds of sizes. This is more of a six inch. You can see there's a difference there. There's bigger ones, there's smaller ones. Um, I think either a six or eight inch size is probably gonna be uh, best for you to get started with. You're gonna need some embroidery needles. You can get any of these supplies at like Joann's or um, Hobby Lobby or um, Michael should carry them, sometimes Walmart or um, Meyer in their craft department um, might have some of these supplies as well. So um, with the embroidery needles, you'll see on the package that it does say embroidery on them and they come in different sizes and um, that the different sizes are um, denoted with numbers. So this one has sizes from one to five. This one is all size five needles. And on this one, they have size five to 10. So a size one needle is gonna be larger and the larger than the, the higher the number um, there is. So like the 10 is actually gonna be smaller. Um, so a size one to five is probably gonna be pretty good um, for you to get started with. They're gonna be bigger. They're gonna be a little easier to work with. And the eye of the needle, the hole in the end where you put the thread through is um, gonna be a little easier to, to work with. Um, you're going to need some um, uh, something to embroider with, some kind of colored um, thread. So this is embroidery floss, and you can get this at any craft store too. Sometimes you can get them in great big packages with a whole big variety of colors. Um, they do come in every color imaginable. So whatever your favorite colors are, <clears throat> you can find it in these. You can also find um, in with those embroidery threads some that are shinier. Um, I don't know if you can see that. But this is um, more of a metallic, um, comes in gold, silver, um, some other colors that are shinier. Um, you can also find them in packages like this, which is a metallic thread. You can find them in cotton. This one I got in an SEA event, so this is going to be a little thicker. Um, and cotton wasn't really used very much back in the Middle Ages, but it's a good um, uh, substitute for linen fabric that we have today. Um, and then I'll show you later on, but <clears throat> you can also use some cord when you do some embroidery as well. Um, you're going to need some fabric, obviously. Um, so this is just a, a scrap of linen that I had. Um, you're going to want to make sure that the size of your fabric that you're working with is bigger than your, your hoop. And I'm going to show you how to load this in a little bit. So um, if it's smaller than your hoop, it's going to be harder to put on there. Um, you're also going to need some scissors to cut your thread, maybe to cut your fabric, and you're going to need something to mark your pattern on. So it could be a marker, a pen, a pencil. They make fabric uh, pencils um, or markers that you can um, draw your 
pattern on your fabric. Um, just want to make sure that it's a color that's going to stand out from your fabric. So if you're using white, you're going to want something darker, but if you're using a dark colored fabric like black or maybe a dark blue or something, um, you're probably going to want to go with more of like a white or yellow color that'll, that you'll be able to see it with. Um, if you're doing straight lines, you're going to want a ruler. Um, and I think that should be uh, good to get us started. Um, so what I'm going to use today in addition to, and this might be something actually good for um, littles to practice with, is you can find this, um, these sheets like this that are um, used for um, things like, I can't remember what it's called right now, um, but this is just a plastic sheet with um, all kinds of holes already in it. So I will use this at some point to um, show you how to do the initial stitch. Um, so that it's a little bit bigger for you than doing it on my fabric, uh, just so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is, um, for today with practice, we're just going to practice doing some straight lines um, for the most part. So um, put your fabric on the table. If you're using a marker, you want to, might want to put some kind of paper or um, newspaper or something else underneath in case it bleeds through onto the, the table. You don't want mom or dad getting um, upset with you because you have marker marks on the table or the countertop. And all I did here was I lined up my ruler and I took my marker and I actually used the lines of the marker to draw like quarter inch lines here, dashed lines, and I left a space in between each one. And I did that a couple times. And um, you don't have to do these, but below here, I did um, just a, a square or rectangle. I would, uh, if I have time, I'll show you how to do a satin stitch. And then I've got a line here that um, I'll show you how to do some couching. Okay, so getting us started, you're gonna need to take your embroidery hoop and there's a screw at the top here um, that you're going to need to, this, the, there's actually two pieces here. So we need to take these apart and we're going to unscrew this to loosen it up. And you don't have to make it so that uh, it comes, this comes all the way out. Just get it to where your, um, your screwed part um, just kind of comes to the tip there. And then these will come apart. And then this is going to be kind of tricky for me to show you, but you can lay this down on the table. Let's see if I can show you this. And you're going to want to put this in the middle of where you're working at. So you can kind of see there where the edges of your hoop are. And then you lay this one over the top. And as you're doing it, you're kind of want to make sure that your fabric is kind of stretched out over it so that it's not super tight but it's snug. Okay so once you get that on and again you can kind of lightly pull your fabric a little bit if you need to you can go ahead and start tightening that screw again. And you want to tighten it to the point where um, you're going to be able to work on it and your fabric's not going to come loose. So I need to pick this up for just a second here so I can really turn that. Okay, and then again, you can kind of gently pull that fabric so it's nice and snug, again, but not tight. Um, one other thing to to mention about the fabric that you choose. You don't want anything that's going to be, um, that's going to have any kind of um, stretchiness to it. So you want, they didn't have that during the Middle Ages and it's also um, going to make it a little harder when you're working with your fabric. You want something that's just going to be, um, that's not having uh, very much stretch or give to it. Okay, so as you can see, my uh, pattern that I'm going to be working with is kind of centered in there. And um, now I'm going to show you how to thread your needle. So when you're working with a packet of needles like this, they are stuck in there pretty well. So if you're having a hard time getting a needle out, which I did, and I'm a grown up, um, you will probably want to have a, a grown up help you get these out because they're not easy to get out of the package. 
So um, your needle has a pointy end and it also has, I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's a, uh, an end over here that has a slit in it. So um, I'm gonna be working mostly with a red thread today. And with the embroidery uh, floss, there's actually a, a bunch of uh, pieces, a bunch of threads in here that are all um, together. So I'm just gonna work with the whole thing today so it's nice and thick and you can see it. But if you um, don't wanna work with that many threads, then um, it's kind of tricky to, to separate them without getting it all tangled up. But that's something for another time. You might wanna have a grown up um, help you with it actually. So I usually just look the end of it I know COVID and everything, we don't wanna be spreading germs, but you know, wash your hands after you're done. Um, you can also use a little bit of um, like a beeswax or something a little bit sticky, but um, then this is um, tricky too. You just gotta move your thread. Uh, sometimes I use my teeth too a little bit to make a nice flat surface. I think I'm going to have to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you line up your thread with the hole in your needle. Oops. And it mostly came through. Oh, I'm missing one thread that being sneaky. Try it again. There, now I've got it. If this is a tricky part for you, don't get frustrated, just have a grown up help you. Um, when you're cutting your, um, your thread, whatever you're working with, you probably don't wanna go much past like an arm's length and then maybe about half. It's good to um, have plenty so that you're not um, having to pull way out, but you can also have some extra, especially if you're gonna be working on um, a big project that's gonna take a lot of thread. You can see where the end of my thread is right there. And you can pull it down so that you've still got some left over and you have some extra here. All right, so now I'm gonna start with my pattern. I'm gonna start, we're gonna learn a running stitch is our uh, the ba basic stitch I'm gonna teach you today and it's um, real basic, but there's some cool stuff that you can do with it um, to make it really fun and add some decoration to it. So um, what I'm going to do is come up from the bottom and you can kind of see, oh, wait a minute, I wanted to show you on um, this first. So you're going to come up from the bottom, a hole where your line is, and pull it to where it still has some dangling off the end, and then you're gonna go back through a hole. Pull it through, and then when you get to about this point, you wanna be really careful when you're pulling it because you don't wanna pull the rest of that thread through. You still wanna leave some dangling here. Um, um, we don't wanna pull that out all the way because that would undo what we just wanted to do. So when you are coming up for your next stitch, what you can do is this might come out on the bottom there. So what we wanna do is kind of tuck it under there. So that when we pull this tight, it kind of locks the end of that in and it won't go anywhere, okay? Let me show you what that looks like on your actual fabric, okay? So you can actually kind of see when you're running your needle underneath where the bump is. So you can find where that starts and come up and then turn it around and look. When you get to about two or three inches from the end, you wanna stop and then go back to the top. Get down in, 
I'm showing you this way. I'm going to show you something quicker to do in just a minute, but I want to give you the idea of what we're doing. And then I'm going to come back up at the start of the next line. And then I'm going to turn it around. And this is where I want to lock that the end of that thread underneath here. Pull that through. Okay, now it's not going to go anywhere. So once you get to this point, there's a quicker way to do this. You can still go down at the end and come up and do it that way, which sometimes depending on what I'm working on, I like to do, but you can also um, move your needle so that it sneaks up from the bottom and you can actually make it come up that way so that you're not even having to pull it twice to get a stitch. You can see that made it a little bit easier. So I went down at the end and then just without even turning it over, just moved my needle to where it starts at the end. And then if you have a really long needle, you can even do it where you go down and come up at another one and you can do a couple stitches at a time. You don't have to do it this way. If it's easier for you to just go down and up, just do it that way because that's how I started doing it. Um, I'm just showing you something that you can work up to and it goes a little bit faster. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, and you can see too, like I kind of goofed there where my thread didn't come up at the end of the line. It's okay, we're just practicing. I'll get better at it. So I'm gonna show you again, if you don't wanna do it that way, you just go down at the end of your line Pull it through, come up at the start of the next line. Go down at the end of that one. Okay, if you need to pause the video at this point so that you can catch up to where you're at there, go ahead and take a pause. Um, if you are about where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do a double running stitch. Um, this is also called a whole bean stitch, not like whole beans, but H-O-L-B-E-I-N. It's a, a different term. Sounds like whole beans though, doesn't it? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, if you don't wanna pause, if you're with me here, I'm just gonna go over to my next line. And I'm going to go ahead and go through this line of dashed lines. Like I showed you before where I went down and I came right up so you can go down at the end. I'm going to sneak your needle in there. I see it's peeking right here, but it's not exactly where I want it. So I can move it back and just find the end of that line. That's where I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and pull through. And you can see my thread is getting bunched up a little bit here. So I'm just going to stop before that turns into a knot. I'm just going to gently pull it out so that it's smooth again. You don't want to get knots in your thread. That makes this a whole lot harder. Um, and those can be tricky to get out. So I'm going to go down at the end of my line. I'm going to make my needle peek out until I find the end of the next line, or excuse me, the beginning of the next line, and push it and pull it all the way through. Nice and slow and easy so that you don't get knots in your thread. Okay. down at the end of one line and pop it up at the beginning of the next one. I'm gonna do that one more time, down at the end of one line. Make it come up at the beginning of the next one. And now I'm at the end of my line here. So I'm just gonna go down. like that, okay? 
So this is a running stitch and this um, can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the things that you can do with a running stitch is make it a double running stitch. And one of the, the ways that you can do it is just to take your needle and go back up through the same hole that you did at the end of one line. And then bring your needle up and go back down here. But um, that would just have one line with the same color in it, which is fine if that's what you want for your project. But you can also make it fancy by using a different color. So now we're going to have kind of like a dashed line with, with two different colors in it. So I'm going to show you how to do that with um, some gold thread here. So I'm going to come up. this way. And again, when you're pulling your thread through, you want to make sure you don't pull it all the way through. Leave a little in the back there so that it doesn't come all the way out. And this time I'm going to go down where the, in the same hole where the other one came, went down in, I'm going to go down this way. Try and get as close to being in that same hole where the other thread went in as possible. So and there you can see you've got red and gold. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, having two colors that are um, a good contrast to each other kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. So I'm using um, red and yellow, which are very different from each other. Um, you could use like purple and green as a favorite color combination for me. You could use black and white. You could use um, black and yellow. You could use um, maybe blue and yellow. Um, but if you like like blue and green, they're not too different from each other, but it still might be the colors that you want in it and that's the look that you want. Um, these stitches are also good for outlining uh, a project, which I'll show you in a little bit. So just coming up in the hole where my red went down and going down in the next hole. Until we get all the way down. If you're using two different colors too, you want to kind of watch in the bit back. One of the things that just happened here is my, my threads were getting a little bit uh, tangled up with each other. So, all right, so there's the end of my double running stitch. And again, you can use the, the same color, just go out one way. When you get to the end of your line, just turn around and go back the other way and fill in those spaces between your lines um, with either the same color stitch or a different color. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, all right, I'm going to show you um, some examples of some very cool patterns that you can do just with being able to do a straight line stitch. So there is um, a very popular um, way of, or a, a style of doing um, embroidery that was called black stitch that was often used um, in the Middle Ages. And so this is just a pattern that was drawn out. This is actually done on what's called eight o'clock, which you can um, get at the craft stores too. And uh, people who do uh, cross stitch, which is a different form of um, decorative stitching, uh, they used eight o'clock because um, there's a, a definite um, squareness to it. So it's easy to kind of do patterns like this. So um, if you, um, you can find patterns like these on the internet, you can print them out trace them out on your um, fabric and then just use your running stitch um, or even a back stitch, which I'm not gonna show you today, but um, maybe another time. And um, that's all this is, is just outlining straight lines um, and you can do some really cool patterns with that. This is an example of another pattern that you can do that actually has some, uh, 
some curved lines to it that you can incorporate in. And again, you know, with small stitches, you can do some really neat stuff. And this is a, an example of red work, which is the same as black work. It's just outlining, but you're using red thread on white that gives it a really neat appearance. And then there's also something called white work, which is um, more of like a white or off-white um, thread that's done on white fabric that um, gives a really neat um, decorative appeal to um, a piece as well without adding color. And it can be really neat that way too. You can also do something like this where you're just having different lines of your running stitch, but you stagger them. So it kind of gives it a little bit like a check um, pattern to it. You could do them where they're like right next to each other, um, do them a little bit thicker, but this looks really neat too. And then this is something that um, somebody just outlined it and then just used the running stitch to outline the different flowers and leaves and the, the basket or pot and butterfly there. So you can see with that, we're just using this basic stitch that we learned, but you can do some um, really neat decorative things with that. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how you can kind of, um, with just a, a basic running stitch to start that you can do um, something even fancier with it. So uh, I'm gonna go back to my running stitch that I started with right here. And I'm going to bring my thread up through one of the holes. And we're going to do something called um, a whipped running stitch. So I'm going to take a contrasting fab, uh, color, something that's going to be different and um, it's going to stand out from the red. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath that stitch with my needle. See there? And I'm not going through the fabric, I'm just going underneath that stitch, sliding it under there. And then now I went through this way, I'm gonna come back with my needle on the next one, going in this direction, not catching the fabric at all, just sliding underneath that thread. And now that I went through this way, I'm gonna go back this way. And then since I went this way, I'm going to come back through this way. And you can see now I'm making a line that has a really neat visual appeal to it. I'm going to finish off this and then I'm going to show you something even cooler that you can do. With just this. So you can see you can pull it tight like that or if you want to, when you're doing your stitches, you don't have to pull it that tight. You can leave it a little bit loose. Um, I'm gonna actually go back through this way. So I think it's gonna be easier to show you. So if you goof up with something like this, it's really easy to go back and undo it too. Whoops, I say that and then I snagged on a little like a thread there. I'm gonna sniff that real quick. So I don't wanna waste time trying to undo that when I need to show you something new. Okay, so just very carefully getting my needle back through there. Oh, I did it again. Holy smoleys. Don't do this on your piece, it won't look right, but I just wanna undo this so I can show you something cool. All right, so when you're doing that, um, initial, whip, initial whip stitch, you can not pull it tight all the way through. You can leave it a little bit loose like that. So that it gives you more of like a snake. And it can look even fancier. like that, okay? Um, the other thing you can do is you can either take this color again 
and go back through and now do a double loop. I'm gonna go back through the opposite way I did before. And now you can see I'm, I'm making a double loop. Um, you can do this with the same color or you can do a different color. And I have a picture in a minute I'll show you just so you can see what that will look like. Um, again, you wanna make sure that you pull it so that those loops are about the same size. Let me go back this way. Make it so they're about the same size there. All the way to the end. And there you have it. Um, now, once you do these, you can kind of straighten them out a little bit if you need to, before you finish this off, kind of make sure everything is nice and even. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like in a picture. So here is the original whipped running stitch that I showed you where they have the red that was the initial running stitch and then they took green and wove it in and out, um, zigzagged it in and out there. This is a different variation on that where the yellow was the running stitch and then they took red and ran it through opposite to make the loops and then they came back with white and you've got that kind of a decoration. <clears throat> the other thing you can do, which is really similar, is if you do two lines of running stitch close together, and then you can do a similar thing where you're going in and out, um, it's not going to be as loose. It'll be tacked down a little bit more, so it'll be less likely to get snagged on something and, and uh, pulled out. Um, so this is another way to do it. Also um, looks really cool. So they did just one color here. But again, if you wanted to, you could go back through with another color and go back the other way and do double um, wavy lines there. So I wanna show you one more thing that is really neat. Um, and I'm gonna pause my video for just a minute because I wanna get my thread ready to show you something else. So let me pause this for just a second here. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> All right, so say you have um, just a piece of um, thread, or this is actually some thick silk cording. Um, you can see where this is thicker than my regular thread. Now, um, in the Middle Ages, sometimes this was made out of metal like gold or silver, um, something like that. Gold actually was used quite a bit, and it's not as flexible as thread is, so um, it's harder to attach to fabric. So what they would do is use a method called couching. And you can do this with just your regular thread or you can do it with something like this. <clears throat> um, but what they would do is if they wanted to just tack it on there so that it didn't move, they would line up, let me move this down. They would line up the cording where they wanted it to be on their line and then come up on their line and then go back down through either the same hole or one really close to it. Get this started here. Okay, so what you want to do is grab onto that cording so that it's held in place. You can use the same color or you can use a different color to kind of add more decoration to it. Um, and so I'm going to go the same distance away. This is about a quarter of an inch. Um, one of the things that's important when you're doing this is kind of make your spaces between um, these as equal as possible so that it looks nice and neat. So all I'm doing is staying on that same line, but I'm going around the cording so I can grab a hold of it and then go back down either through the same hole or really close next to it and pull it so that it grabs onto it. So just snug, not really super tight, but just snug enough to hold it like you're holding hands. Okay, um, and then 
I got some lines marked there so that I'm going about the same distances apart. Again, just repeating that. If I wanted to do this with just some other silk thread or my embroidery floss, or um, sometimes with some wool thread. Now, one of the things that happened right here is that this, the thread that I'm working with, got looped around the end of that cording. So I'm just gonna gently pull that back out and work it around there. Now, if I was doing this for real, I would probably have started um, more on the end of that cording so that it was all fastened down. Coming up. Just till it's snug and then come down right by that. Okay. The other thing that you can do, and the reason why I wanted to show you this, I'm gonna move this out of the way, but when I did this stitch over here, if I these loops can get snagged on things and it might pull your design out of, um, of line. So one of the things that you can do to help hold this down is to use that couching stitch. I came up right where that point is right there. And going back in. So now I'm holding that loop down in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. So I wanna keep that going along that same line. This way, all your hard work is gonna last a little longer and it won't be as likely to get messed up when you're actually wearing or using whatever piece you use, you did with it. Oh, now I think. Got a little bit of a knot in the end. I'm just gonna gently pull that back out. If you catch it where it's not too tight, you should be able to just gently pull your knot back out and you'll be good to go. Get that cording out of the way. Okay. And then you can kind of Move your thread to make it all in a line there. So all you would do is just keep going until you get the whole thing all the way done on each side and it will give you a really neat look and it'll be nice and sturdy for you too. So um, that is all I have for you today, except to say that um, once you learn how to do basic embroidery stitches there is a lot of stuff that you can use it for to decorate and uh, make it look uh, fancier so um, you could do it on clothing of course so one of the things I would like to do with my hood here is to do a pattern like maybe some kind of a leaf pattern or something um, maybe some flowers maybe just a, a design I'm going to trace it on here and um, do some embroidering on this because right now it's kind of plain and I like to fancy it up a little bit. And I could do it around <clears throat> the edge of my hood as well. I could do it on the edges of my sleeves to make it fancier. Um, I could do it around the bottom of my, uh, the skirt part of my gown. Um, I could do it on handkerchiefs. I could do veils. I could do uh, cushions, pillows, um, bed coverings, gloves. There were some really fancy gloves that were done tablecloths, belts, wall hangings, um, cloaks, capes, um, bookmarks. If you wanted to do something simple, a bookmark would be a nice small project to, to start with. Um, you could do embroidery and aprons, coifs, which is the, the tight covering that goes over your head, kind of like a, a hat um, or a bonnet. Um, people um, would do embroidery on bags and boxes, um, hats, um, saddle covers, you know, things for your horses and things like that. So um, anything that have fabric, you can do embroidery on. And even people who are um, commoners um, might have done it just to dress up their own clothing, although um, they didn't do a lot of that. It was mostly for the, the royalty, but, you know, uh, 
especially with like the jewels and the pearls and things like that. Um, and the fancier uh, embroidery was all done with royalty. Um, but the commoners did some, you know, really neat stuff like this that you can do and just um, do it and uh, just have a little something fancy. Um, but also the uh, uh, people who weren't royalty would, royalty would do this um, themselves as a pastime, something like a hobby, but um, commoners or other people would do it as a profession um, and they could earn money at uh, doing this. And once you got really good at it, they could do some really incredible pieces that um, I might show you in another lesson. But um, that is all I have for you for today. Um, uh, feel free to um, reach out to uh, Lady Silly if uh, you want to get in touch with me to learn anything more about this. And maybe we'll do another lesson another time to show you something even fancier. So um, have fun and take care and be safe. Duck, duck, gray duck.